Welcome to the second stitch along for pattern number three in Flowers and Butterflies, an English paper piecing skill building series. In this video, we are going to stitch up the flower. And for pattern number three, we're talking about fussy cutting. So I'm going to show you how I fussy cut for this particular flower pattern, giving you some tips and some tricks that I like to use for fussy cutting. If you're new to the series and you would like to start at the beginning, then be sure to check out the links down below in the description where I have all the information about the English Paper Piecing Skill Building series for you there. If you've been following along with the Skill Building series but don't have your pattern yet, you can also check out the link down below in the description to my shop where you can find all of the patterns for the Skill Building series. Let's head over to the work table and get started on our flower. Let's go over the materials that you're going to need for this project. First of all, you're wanna, gonna wanna have your templates ready. So whether you purchase the digital pattern or whether you purchase the pre-cut paper templates, you wanna make sure that you've got all of your templates prepared and we should have one octagon shape we should have 16 of the half petal shapes and half of those will be turned this way and the other half will be turned that way. So you should have 16 of these and then you should have eight of the little leaf uh, templates. In addition to those templates, you may want to make your own fussy cutting template. And I've got a couple of examples here. Uh, it's the same type of template, but I made two versions for the leaf so that I could have options there when I'm doing my fussy cutting. Uh, sorry, that's the petal. And then this is the leaf template that I made. If you would like to learn how to make your own DIY fussy cutting templates, I will link to that up above I also recommend getting a marking tool. So whether that's a pencil or a permanent marker, you can decide what you would prefer to use. But basically this is for marking your fussy cutting template. When you begin to fussy cut, you might wanna make some little marks on your template as an indicator to help you line up the repeat multiple times. So a pencil will work great on these cardboard templates if you decide to use cardboard and it's removable. That's why I like using a pencil. You can also use a marker like a permanent Sharpie, a fine point permanent Sharpie marker and that will work really well if you are using plastic template material. The next item you're going to need is your favorite basting method. So I prefer using glue for basting you're welcome to use glue. I highly recommend glue uh, just because it goes so much quicker and it really helps you to make tight uh, piecing. So it really helps to secure your fabric nice and tightly to your templates. And I just prefer that. But you're more than welcome to also, or to use uh, thread basting if that's your preferred method. I've got two pairs of scissors here. One I use for when I'm actually English paper piecing. These are my thread snips. And so you don't need two pairs, but whatever you're comfortable with, I like using the smaller ones when I'm actually English paper piecing. These scissors I pulled out because these are fantastic for cutting fabric. And I'm gonna show you how I cut out my fabric here in just a minute. But I do have the second pair here because they're just, they're better at cutting fabric than my little snips are. So in addition to those items, you're obviously gonna need your fabric and your thread. So these are the fabrics that I am using for this particular flower. I've got one fabric that I'm gonna be fussy cutting and then I have a solid and a solid-like fabric. And if you'd like to learn more about the types of fabrics that you can use for fussy cutting, make sure you watch the first video of this stitch along which I will link to up here. I talk about a little bit about the pattern for uh, this month, and I also discuss, go into more detail on the best fabrics for fussy cutting. So you can check that out. 
I do have two colors of thread because these colors are so different and this the center fabric uses both of those colors. So I'm gonna be um, alternating between these two depending on you know what I'm stitching. You're more than welcome to use one color. It's up to you, however you wanna do that. And then for our stitching uh, materials, you're gonna need your favorite needle. I do have a video on the best needles for English paper piecing, which you might wanna check out, which I will also link to above. So you can check that out if you're curious about needles for English paper piecing, but I've got my needle here. It's already threaded up with my uh, turquoise thread. I've got a needle minder here. I really love working with needle minders. You may also want to use some wonder clips. Those are very helpful in holding piecing together, but I like the needle minder because it kind of doubles as uh, a clip. It holds my pieces together and it holds my needle when I need it to. I also have a needle threader. This is optional, but uh, I'm finding that it's much easier to thread my needle with a needle threader than without. And then I've got just this um, paper sorter finger cover, and this is my thimble. So you can use something like this, or you can use a real thimble, whatever your preferred stitching method is. So those are the materials that we're gonna need. Let's next move into getting our templates basted to our fabric. Okay, the first shape I'm gonna go ahead and baste is the octagon. I have decided to use this turquoise solid for the center of my flower, so um, that's what I'm gonna use for my octagon. But you can also fussy cut your center flower if you want. Uh, I just recommend that if you want to fussy cut it, um, you can do one of two things. You can just use your template as it is. Since there's only one per flower, it's very easy to fussy cut something like this. You could just kind of center it over whichever motif you want to use that might be on your fabric. The other option is you could also make a DIY fussy cutting template for the octagon. So... Either way, uh, just use whichever method you're, you're most comfortable with. So what I like to do, and you may have seen this already in some earlier videos, is I like to just put a little dot of glue right in the center of my template. And then I flip it over and I press it, finger press it onto my fabric. And again, if you're using a fussy cuttable fabric with your octagon, then you'll wanna place that wherever you want that uh, fussy cut to be for your fabric. Once that's tacked on, then you can go ahead and cut out your seam, your uh, seam allowance. Cut out your fabric around your shape, leaving a minimum of a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is pretty standard. Um, if you've been following along with the skill building series, then you're already familiar with this process. Okay, so I'm done with this fabric. I'm just going to toss that over there. And we're going to go ahead and baste this shape. So the octagon is very similar to the hexagon in that you're not going to have any strange little fabric tails sticking out anywhere. Everything tucks in really nicely behind your shape. So it doesn't matter what side you start on. You can pick any side and you'll just, as usual, put a little line of glue, making sure that you don't come all the way to the edge of the paper with that glue, and then fold your fabric over. So I'm right-handed, so I like to baste in the direction that I'm going right now, which I'm gluing away from myself with my working hand, which is my right hand, and I'm turning my shape towards my working hand. If you are left-handed, you'll do the exact opposite. So you'll hold the glue in this hand, and you'll glue away from you in that direction you can then turn your piece towards your working hand, which would be your left hand. So you would go towards your working hand like so. That's, you know, just a recommendation. If you have another way that feels more comfortable to you, then by all means use 
the direction and the rhythm and the method that feels the best for you. Okay, and just like that, our center flower is done. Next, we are going to move on to the leaf shapes, and then we'll finish off with our petal shapes. So for the leaf shapes, I'm gonna be using this green fabric here, and I am going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. Even though this is a solid-like fabric, so it's not completely solid like this fabric uh, is, it has a little bit of texture and a little bit of design going on within the fabric. Overall, uh, it kind of has a solid-like look. So from far away, it might look like a solid. But you can see that we have some lighter green, and then we have this kind of a olive green in patches all around our fabric. So I'm just trying to decide here which motif or which area I actually want to use. The reason I'm having a trouble deciding is because I have light green and then I also have kind of an olive green. It's actually not quite as olive as this. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to go... Because I want all of my little leaves, the outer leaves, to be consistent... I think I'm gonna go with these lighter green areas and I'm gonna just kind of fussy cut, you know, fussy my, my templates into those areas. So I'll show you how I do that. Again, just like with the octagon, there are two ways that you can go about this. Um, and again, it's gonna depend on your fabric. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do for my fabric. If you're working with a similar fabric that kind of has this two-tone thing going on, you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing. If you have a fabric that has a very definite fussy cut section that you want to isolate, then, um, then I'll kind of talk you through that as I do this, okay? So because I don't have specific areas on here like a flower shape that I want to repeat or duplicate over and over. Option one is to, just like the octagon I recommended, you can just take your template and place it, you know, in an area that's going to give you what you're going for, okay? So this is if you don't have a specific motif such as what I'm working with here. I don't really have, um, you know, a specific detailed motif to work with. So I can really position this anywhere. I don't really need to use a fussy cutting template for this. But if I wanted to, let's say I want to make sure that I stay away from any of these dark areas. And maybe you could even say, Maybe I also want to stay away from these really light areas and I really only want to pick up this darker emerald green, okay? The other option and what would really allow me to see what I'm going to be getting is using our DIY fussy cutting template. So you can just place this on your fabric wherever you want your motif to appear. So this spot here looks pretty good because the entire shape is showing only that darker emerald green. And as I move this around, you can see now we get a little bit of light in there and now we've got some of that dark green or that olive green showing in there. So the fussy cutting template really shows you what's going to actually be visible on your template piece once you get your fabric cut out, okay? Um, for this particular fabric, I'm not going to use my fussy cutting template. 
I'm just going to kind of stick these on wherever I think they look good. And I'll show you how to use the fussy cutting template when we get to my third fabric, which has got the very definite motif in it. So the way that I do this is very similar to how we did it with the solid, but because we have these different modeled colors and design in here, we want to be a little bit more fussy when we start to glue our shape down. Okay, so the first step that we need to do, and sometimes I forget to do this, uh, and I'm really glad I remembered, <laughs> but the first step we need to do is we need to actually flip our fabric over. So we want to be looking at the wrong side of our fabric. Okay. And this is another reason why you might want to use your fussy cutting template because when you flip the fabric over, sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to see where your design is. And you may want to consider getting yourself a light table. And I will link down below to the light table that I use and that I recommend. But I think for this fabric, I can see where those kind of emerald green sections are. And I don't know if I can show this. Let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it. I'm noticing that my repeat starts right up here. Okay, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for that dark area because it's just, it jumps out at my eye. So it's kind of a, you know, crescent moon shape. And I'm noticing that up here as well. So I have a repeat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of uh, place my templates in the more emerald green area on the repeats until I have enough. So I need eight. We have eight of our leaf templates. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And just like the octagon, we put a little dab of glue on the back of our template and then flip it over onto the wrong side of the fabric and place it down. And I'm going to be putting mine at a little bit of an angle um, because this green area kind of goes in this direction. So that's how I will be placing it. And because again, because this is kind of a modeled uh, fabric, I'm not too concerned about being exact. The next fabric that I'm gonna show you, I am gonna be much more particular about that one. So I'm just kind of, you know, eyeballing it and kind of putting them at the same angle, roughly about the same distance apart from the edge of the fabric. Now, I do notice that I have another section of that same green here, but we're getting a little bit close to the edge of the fabric. So I'm before I put any glue on my template, I'm just going to kind of audition it and I'm going to just place it on the fabric here and see if it will fit. So it looks like I have plenty of room here on the edge for a seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and get an extra piece from this section of the fabric. And one thing I want to point out, I just noticed that I do actually have a reference point um, that is almost lining up with all my shapes. And I want to point this out because this is something that you can look for as you are fussy cutting with your fabric. So the first thing that I just noticed was I have this, this dot right here at the tip. The corner of the piece here is pointing at this white dot. It's actually green, but to my eye, it looks white because we're looking at the back of the fabric. And if I look at every single piece, eh, it's pretty close, but this is also pointing at that dot, same dot, and this is similar. So 
I'm getting a little bit off here and I'm getting even more off here and even more off here. And you know, for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to worry about it. However, I'm pointing this out to you so that as you work on your fussy cutting, you can start picking out little elements from the fabric like this to help you to be consistent with your repeats. And what I mean by repeat is basically we're taking the same shape and we want to repeat or replicate the motif for that shape. And we can do that on any fabric that has a repeat. So we have these, you know, these dark blotches that step stand out to my eye that indicate that there's a repeat here. And these dots that we are seeing also indicate that there's a repeat. So just keep your eyes open for little um, elements within your fabric and within your motif, uh, within the motif that's in the fabric to help you to line up your, your template shapes a little bit easier. So here's my motif uh, repeat that, that crescent shape that I'm looking for. So I just wanna look for that up here and I see it here in this row, okay? So I know that right below that is where we're gonna have what I'm looking for here for my fabric. You wanna make sure that they're, you're not mixing them up. So if you place it upside down like this, you wanna make sure that you're placing them all in that same direction in relation to whatever you're fussy cutting, okay? I have arranged them like so on my fabric, so that's how I wanna make sure that I am sticking it down. Okay, so I tacked it with some glue, and let's see if we can find that, there it is, that little dot. So I'm just gonna, oh, let me turn this a little bit. There we go. So what I'm kind of eyeballing is I've got that dot, so I wanna make sure that my corner here is pointing at that, but I'm also looking at this edge and putting it parallel with this edge of the fabric. And it's not exact, but it's just kind of a rough, you know, reference point for my eye so that I can get my piece in the general direction that I want it to be going. And that's just another technique that you can use for your eye as a reference point. And these are some tips, again, if you are not using your fussy cutting template and you're just using your standard pattern templates like I'm doing here. Okay, so those are all stuck. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them out just like I cut out our octagon and make sure that I leave enough of a seam allowance all the way around. And then I will come back and I'll show you how I'm going to fussy cut the petal pieces. Before I show you the petal pieces, I just quickly wanna show you how to baste your leaf shapes. I like to start at the base of the leaf this is the base and this is the top of the leaf. And really the only way you can tell the difference is that these sides are slightly shorter than the top sides. The angles are very similar. Um, so I just look for the shorter sides and make sure that those are on the bottom. So I like to start at the base of the leaf, like I said. And I like to do both of them at the same time before moving to the top of the leaf. So I start on the left side of the base. You can start on the right side of the base if you are left-handed because you'll be working in the opposite direction. And the reason I based it this way is so that when we get ready to put the leaves onto the rest of the shapes, the little tails that we have here sticking out, 
tuck down behind the petals. It's so that when you have your finished flower, you don't have any extra tails sticking out that are unnecessarily, they don't need to be sticking out, okay? So that's why I like to stitch the base first and then come around the top of the leaf. Go ahead and baste all of your leaf shapes and then we will go over how to cut, fussy cut, and baste your petal shapes. Okay, let's work on our petal pieces next. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my petal templates and I'm going to grab my fussy cutting templates. Now, I wanted to show you this example that I have already made. You can see here that I've got the two petal templates. There's one for that side and then there's one for this side. And what I did is I fussy cut each one and I made sure to line up my template in the exact same spot for every single one of them using a magic mirror. And I'm gonna show you how I did that here in just a second. I think for the flower that I'm gonna make this time, I wanna try a different design within the same fabric. So I'm gonna kind of play with that. Okay, so this is the mirror that I'm referring to. It's made by Marty Michelle. Michelle. Uh, and I've got a link to this down below in the description. If you don't already have a mirror, I highly recommend getting one if you are planning on playing around with fussy cutting more in your English paper piecing. It's a great tool to have and I'm gonna show you how I use it right now. So first off, I get my fussy cutting template and I'm gonna go ahead and position this on the fabric uh, the way that I did for the flower I just showed you. So I took the outer portion of the petal, the outer side of that petal, and I lined it up in the center, roughly in the center of this blue motif. And I also used the corner right here and position that right on the corner of this little petal that's within the actual fabric. And then to simulate what that would look like before I cut out any fabric, I grabbed my mirror and I'm lining up the edge of my mirror right along the, ed the inside edge of the fussy cutting template. And what that allows me to do is that I can now look at all of the reflections that are presented to me within this mirror and that will give me an idea of what my my actual design will look like if I were to cut out the fabric like that. So if we compare these two we can actually see that that is what I got. So that's how you can use the magic mirror. So for this flower, let's do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my mirror for now and I wanna find a different type of motif. I'm gonna try this outer corner of the flower petal and we're gonna line that up right at that corner and I'm just gonna kind of turn it until I get rid of this little green edge that's creeping through. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. I'm trying to work in a small space. Here we go. So as it's positioned right now, you can see a little bit of bleed from these other green petals. So I'm just gonna adjust it slightly so that I don't see those, but still keeping that right in the corner. And what's really cool I'm noticing is that this diagonal blue is matching up or not really matching up, but it's pointing right into this corner. So let's see what that looks like. So let me turn this whole thing this way so I can line it up with the camera. And we'll grab the mirror. Ooh, okay. Okay, let's get in closer. There we go. So, okay, this is interesting. So what I'm noticing is I've got this really cool diamond shape happening with this aqua. I really like that diamond shape. And I also have two petals coming together and it looks like part of a third petal 
is just peeping through right there. I am liking this. The blue is going to be in the center. This turquoise blue will be in the center. And my little greens are going to be out here right there. So the next thing I need to do before we can actually start basting our shapes onto this is we got to flip our fabric over because we baste to the wrong side of the fabric. And this can be a little bit tricky. So just have patience with yourself. If you lose your place, um, what I like to do is I like to, where I just was, just kind of put my hand there and then flip everything over. Okay, and that way I kind of know where I left off. Now, it's pretty easy to know with this fabric because I've already got a section cut out of it and I know that I was working right here near that cut section. But if you're working with a brand new fat quarter, you know, you, you may lose your place. I do recommend working with at least a fat quarter if you are doing actual fussy cutting with a repeat because a 10 inch square most likely isn't going to give you enough fabric for the repeats that we need for this pattern. So I need a total of eight repeats going in one direction and eight repeats going in another direction, the opposite direction. So you wanna make sure you've got enough fabric. So if I can remember correctly, I think, okay, yeah. So I know that I had my little motif in this outer corner and this was pointing down the petal shape to the base of the petal which is this square edge right here. So that's the base of our petal. So that's what I'm gonna eyeball. I wanna make sure that I'm lining all of that up. And what I'm noticing is I am getting a little too close. So I've got this cut fabric here. I'm getting a little bit too close to where I want my seam allowance. So I'm not gonna be able to position it this direction. Um, in this location. But what I can do is I can actually flip it so that I'm not having to, you know, come way over here to start my first shape. I can just go ahead and flip it and I'll work with this piece here instead. And actually you can kind of position them. Yeah, that's getting a little too close there. So you can just play with your positioning. What's nice about this fabric is it is completely symmetrical. So I've got symmetry both on a horizontal axis, but I also have symmetry on a vertical axis going up and down. So I can really, you know, position this template in any one of the four directions. So um, whether or not you can do that is going to be determined by the fabric that you're using. So just keep that in mind. Okay, this looks pretty good. I've got my corner here and I've got my turquoise pointing away in this corner. And again, if you need a light box or you need some sort of light source behind your fabric in order to see more of the detail so that you can figure out where you're at and where to place your template, then definitely get a tool like that. It's very helpful. I'm gonna start tacking my templates and I'm gonna show you how I do that with the fussy cutting template. So I'm gonna get down close and take a look at this and just make sure that I don't have any of that green bleeding over from these other shapes. I really wanna make sure that I keep those out of here. But I, so I got that lined up. I'm gonna hold it with one finger and then I'm gonna turn this until this lines up with this corner. And that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is try to, without moving that, grab a template and we wanna place it in that direction. So I'm gonna flip it over and add my dab of glue. And this is how I work with the DIY fussy cutting templates. So now that we know where we wanna put our template, we've got our dab of glue on the back. I'm just gonna place this inside of the fussy cutting template. And I really want this corner to be as exact 
with the fussy cutting template as possible. That's going to kind of be my um, my default that I'm always going to go to is I'm going to make sure that this inner template is butted up against the outer template right in this corner along this edge and along this edge. The reason I'm pointing that out is because sometimes when you make your DIY fussy cutting template, you might cut your, your shape, your inner shape, a little bit too big. And that's okay if you do. You just want to be consistent with every piece that you place inside of it. That way it will help your fussy cuts to come out more accurate. So if I put this over here, I'm running out of fabric. That's not going to work. So let me try to place this this way and see what we get. Okay, so we are now encroaching. <laughs> We're now encroaching on this template. So this won't fit here either. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to do exactly what I just did. I'm just going to try to find my repeats and figure out how I can get all of my shapes to fit on my fabric. So just like we did with the previous shapes, the next step is to go ahead and cut around your template pieces, making sure you're leaving at least a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, I will show you how to baste these petal shapes. So for this particular shape and this particular pattern, I really like to baste the foundation of the petal first. So that's the shortest side. And then I work my way around the shape. And I go in the same direction on both versions of this shape. So being right-handed, I'm going to start here and I'm gonna to go to the next side that's to my right. If you're left-handed, you would go to the next side that's to your left and then just baste in that direction all the way around. So I'll show you uh, one petal half and then I'll show you the other petal half. That way you can see uh, visually what I'm talking about. Start with the base, as I said, and then just work your way around the shape. And really, it doesn't matter which direction you go in your basting. The main thing is you want to be consistent across all of your shapes. And the reason we want consistency is because it's going to allow all of our little tails that we have on our pieces to nest underneath each other without causing a whole lot of bulk. Now we're gonna do the other half. And again, I'm just gonna start at the base. Now, instead of going on a diagonal line, which we did on this shape, the next line is actually the long side. So I'm still basting in the same direction, even though the shape itself is facing the other direction. So I'll show you what this looks like here in just a second and how those tails will nest under each other. Okay, so that was the right side of the petal. So now when we take these two pieces and we put them together to simulate stitching them, you can see that this tail goes right up underneath the other tail. Go ahead and finish basting your petals and then we'll move on to actually stitching our flower together. So the first step in assembling our flower is to first put our petal pieces together. So go ahead and grab a left hand side and a right hand side of the petal pieces. And we are going to stitch down this center seam. So you'll just put them right sides together. 
I'm going to go ahead and add my needle minder on here. Now for the petal pieces, you can really start at either end, but because we've got our tails down here, I prefer to start at the 90 degree end. It just makes it a little bit easier and quicker to get going, but feel free to start at whichever end you, you want to. It really doesn't matter. And you're just gonna go ahead and stitch your pieces together. So when you get close to your tails, you're going to need to fold this one back so that you don't stitch that down. You don't wanna stitch it into your seam allowance here. You wanna pull that back. So I just kind of do that with my fingers, kind of sandwich them together between my fingers. Since I'm holding that corner anyway, it works just fine um, to go ahead and pull the, the tails back at the same time. And then I just continue stitching until I get to the end where the two points meet. Right about there. And then tying off at that end. And I go ahead and bury my thread because we are going to be working with a completely different set of shapes. I bury my thread and cut my thread so that I can move on to the next pair of petal pieces. So as you can see here, because we're working with fussy cutting, I wanna point this out. I didn't really uh, pay much attention <laughs> to what was going on in my seam as I was stitching. And you can see my fussy cut is a little bit off. So my, my, sh my shapes are just a little bit shifted. Now I'm noticing also that uh, one side has a little bit more of this green showing than the other side. So it may not have been my stitching or my, you know, my lining up of my shapes together. It may have actually been the placement of my template onto the fabric. So you can see that the more fussy you get and the more particular you get about placing your template onto the fabric, but also when you go to stitch, the more particular and more careful you are about lining up your uh, kind of the designs within the fabric, you can you can see them here and whether or not they line up. So I wasn't even really paying attention to that. I should have, which I will do on the next ones. Um, but as you pay attention to that and take your time with it and are careful with it, you will get more successful fussy cuts that are actually lined up with each other. So go ahead and finish assembling your flower petals, and then we'll move on to the next step. The next step in our flower is to attach the petals to the center piece. And I like to take the petals and stitch them all at the same time around the center, and then go back and do the uh, seams between the petals later on. So that's how I'm gonna show you how to assemble this. But you are welcome to attach each petal individually and start by working on the seam and then sewing it to the center, if that's what you prefer. As usual, uh, you'll start and stop with a knot at the beginning and end of your seam. I like to do a couple of stitches right here in the center where the two petals meet, that center seam there. Um, I like to secure both sides of those to the flower center with just a couple of stitches. There's no need to make a knot, but if you just do a couple stitches right on top of each other, that will hold it nice and secure. Okay, so because I'm going to be moving on to the next petal, which I'm gonna add to this side of the octagon, I am not going to bury my thread. I'm just gonna continue stitching on to that next piece. So I'm gonna remove my needle minder and fold 
the petal that I just stitched open, grab my next petal and just set that right next to it. And again, I'm not worrying about this seam right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just continue along this seam. So I'm gonna flip it along that seam face to face with the center shape. And let's see, grab my needle miter and continue stitching. So it might be a little bit challenging because you've got the shape right here. So whatever you have to do, if you wanna fold it out of the way so you can see uh, where, your, where your center shape begins, uh, feel free to do whatever you need to do to make sure that you get a stitch right at that little corner, right at that little junction where everything meets. And let me zoom in so you can really see that. There we go. So you can see I just add my first stitch right at that little junction and it helps to fold that out of the way so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And again, because we're starting a new seam, we wanna make sure that we knot right here at the beginning. Now I have got a couple of seam allowances here and actually I didn't even notice that on the other one. I think I had, I think I had uh, folded it out of the way and it wasn't really even paying attention to that. But um, you definitely want to fold your little, the corners of those seam allowances out of the way so that you have a nice clean um, seam to work with. The reason why you don't want to stitch your seam allowances down when you're stitching your seam is because you may need to uh, make adjustments to them or you may need to press them in another direction. And so it's always a good idea to make sure that they're they're free so that if you do need to press them in the opposite direction for whatever reason, um, you have that ability. So I'm just gonna continue in the same exact way, adding the remaining petals onto the center, remembering to extra secure, take some extra stitches to secure this little junction here in the center of the petal. So go ahead and work your way around with your petals and I'll meet you back here for the leaves and show you how we're gonna add our little outer leaves to our flower. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. Before we can add our leaf shapes, we need to stitch our petals together to each other. So to do this, what we need to do is we need to pick the two petals we're gonna work on, and we want to fold the entire flower so that those two petals are face to face, right sides together. So we need to fold it along that seam. And you're gonna notice that there's gonna be a second seam over here that it's gonna line up with. So you can go ahead and just fold the entire piece directly in half. So fold the flower in half and you can secure it with clips or a needle minder. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my needle minder and put it over here. And I'm gonna get my second needle minder, just set my needle there. And I'm actually gonna put it over here because I just noticed that Rather than have to go around and fold your flower in half twice for these two seams, I've already folded it once, they're already lined up. So I'm gonna stitch this seam first, I'll knot here, and then I'm gonna jump over here and stitch that seam, just to save some time. So you can always be looking for different ways that you can make your English paper piecing a little bit more efficient uh, it is a slower process, as you as you know, <laughs> it's a slower stitching process. Um, but there's always little shortcuts that you can take to kind of, you know, help you speed it up just a little bit. So just like usual, we're going to start with a knot at the beginning of our seam, and then we're going to stitch to the end of our seam, which is going to be right here where we meet up with the centerpiece, and I'll put a knot there. Now, one of the things that you could do, which I just 
thought of and I totally forgot, but you could actually go ahead and remove this paper from the center shape because all of the sides of this shape have been stitched to another shape. So you can remove this. You wouldn't even have to fold this. So uh, keep that in mind as well. I have a tendency to forget that I can remove my papers. Um, and I just noticed that because as I'm stitching, it's kind of, with this needle minder on here, it's just a little bit heavier than it would be without it. And uh, it was kind of flopping around and then I just realized, wait a minute, that doesn't even need to be there. So just remember that any shape that has all of its sides stitched to another shape can be removed. The paper can be removed. And that will make your stitching experience a little bit more pleasant. So I'm going to go ahead and bury my thread because I still need to remove that paper. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch up the next set of petals. And here's the seam, the two seams that I went ahead and stitched just now. And you can see it's much more floppy and relaxed and it's going to be a little bit easier to handle. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn it this way, fold it again in half. And because the paper's not in there, I'm not having to put another crease in my template. And once you do that seam, then you can turn it again and stitch the last two petal seams here and here. So go ahead and stitch your petals together. I'm going to finish this and I will come back and show you the <laughs> little leaf pieces. Okay, now we can finally add our leaves to the flower. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add one at a time. Our tails should be pointing towards our petals like so. And because of that, what we can do is actually, you can place your finger on top of that little tail as you're placing your shape and then fold it over while you're holding that little tail and that will help you to flip your piece and keep it in the position it needs to be in, uh, making sure that that corner is still lined up with, with the corner. We do need to fold this little, um, tail back slightly while we're stitching so that we don't stitch that seam allowance into our seam. And it really helps to have that center paper that was in our center shape for our flower. It really helps to have that paper piece removed for this part. Because you can see I'm actually making like a sandwich out of my flower and it, I need to be able to fold it and hold the entire flower in one hand in order to get to these outer shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and knot my thread here at the end of that seam. And before I cut or bury my thread, we're not going to do that. We're going to do uh, similar to like what we did with the petal. We're going to keep our thread attached. We're going to reposition and then we're going to continue in the other direction. So to reposition, we just open it up like we did with the petals. And what we need to do now is we need to actually fold along this seam line here. And the only way to do that is to go ahead and bend your petal templates. If you're using cardstock, which I highly recommend for your templates, if you're doing your own DIY templates using the pattern um, and you're using cardstock, you will be able to reuse your templates multiple times. And if you've purchased pre-cut templates from my shop, I use cardstock. So all the templates you get from me will be on cardstock and it's the same exact cardstock that I use for my own templates. And I reuse my templates, gosh, uh, maybe three, four, sometimes five times. It really depends on the shape and the corners and how much wear and tear they get. 
So, but you can definitely get at least two or three uses out of a good cardstock template. So I went ahead and knotted my thread. I took two stitches and then I did a knotting stitch at the beginning of the seam, just like normal. And I'm gonna do the same at the end of this seam, just like normal. So that's how you add your leaf shape to your flower. So go ahead and take the rest of your leaf shapes and add them to this concave angle in between your petals all the way around your flower. And then I will meet you back here for some closing thoughts. Okay, so your flower should look like, or something like this. You should have your center, your petals all around, and then your leaves in between each of your petals. You can go ahead and press your shape if you want to. I am deciding to leave in my papers for the petals and the leaves because I have a very specific project that I'm going to be making this with. And I'm actually gonna be showing you how to make that project in a future video. If you already have a project in mind that you want to use your flower for, then go ahead and remove your papers if you're ready to do so. Press it before you remove your papers. And the reason for that is you wanna get your, your little tails and all your seams nice and set. You wanna get your stitches set before you start removing the bulk of your papers. And that'll help tighten up your stitches and your seams as well. So um, just to kind of show you what I like to do, I like to push my, just with my fingers, push the little tails for the leaves underneath and swipe my finger underneath the tip of the petal just to make the those tails go in the direction that they're supposed to go. And then I bring my iron and I press those areas. And I just work my way just like that around the flower, like so, pressing as I go. And that is, that's as easy as it is to go ahead and press your shape. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything new that you learned about fussy cutting or even just English paper piecing in general from this video. In the next video, we're gonna work on the butterfly from pattern number three. So go ahead and prep your templates if you haven't done so already and pull your fabrics. And just a quick reminder, if you don't yet have pattern three, you can get that from my shop, which is linked down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep on stitching.